Found out my fiancé was cheating a week before our wedding, so I called it off. Now he's desperately trying to win me back, but I've already moved on with someone unexpected. You never expect your life to change so dramatically in just one day. I was on top of the world, eagerly counting down the days to my wedding. Invitations had been sent, the venue was booked, and I had the perfect dress. My fiancé Mark and I had been together for five years, and I thought I knew him better than anyone. But life has a funny way of shattering your illusions, right when you least expect it. It was a sunny Tuesday afternoon when my world fell apart. I was at home, taking a break from finalising some last-minute wedding details, when my phone buzzed with a message from an unknown number. Curious, I opened it. The message was short, just a few words and a picture, but it was enough to turn my stomach. Your fiancé has been cheating on you. Here is proof. Attached was a photo of Mark in a passionate embrace with another woman. My hands shook as I zoomed in on the image, trying to convince myself it wasn't real, that it was some sick joke. But there was no mistaking Mark's face, his familiar features twisted in a way I had never seen before. I felt like I was going to be sick. For a few minutes, I just sat there, numb, staring at the screen. Then the anger hit. I needed to know more, to find out if this was a one-time thing or something more. I called my best friend Jess, who arrived at my place in record time. Together, we did some social media sleuthing, and it didn't take long to uncover the truth. Mark had been seeing this woman for months. There were pictures, messages, and even comments from mutual friends who seemed to know all about it. I felt like my heart had been ripped out of my chest. Jess held me as I sobbed, my dreams of a perfect wedding and a happy future crumbling around me. She suggested confronting Mark, but I wasn't ready for that yet. I needed time to process, to figure out what to do next. That night I barely slept. I kept replaying our relationship in my mind, trying to pinpoint when things had started to go wrong. But there were no signs, no warnings. Mark had been the perfect partner, or so I thought. The next morning, I knew I had to confront him. There was no way I could go through with the wedding without addressing this betrayal. I called Mark and told him to come over, that we needed to talk. He sounded confused, but agreed. When he arrived, I could barely look at him. I handed him my phone with the damning photo and watched as his face turned white. He stammered, trying to come up with an explanation, but I cut him off. I didn't need to hear his lies. How long has this been going on, Mark? I demanded, my voice shaking with anger. He hesitated, then admitted it had been going on for six months. Six months of deceit, of lies, while we planned our future together. I felt a fresh wave of betrayal wash over me. I can't marry you, I said, my voice breaking. I don't even know who you are anymore. Mark pleaded with me, begged for forgiveness, promised it would never happen again. But his words felt hollow. The trust was gone, shattered into a million pieces that could never be put back together. I called off the wedding that day. Telling our families and friends was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. My parents were supportive but heartbroken for me. Some friends were shocked. Others had suspected something was wrong but hadn't said anything. The next few days were a blur of cancellations, returned gifts and awkward conversations. Mark tried to reach out several times, but I ignored him. I needed to focus on myself to heal from this devastating betrayal. Through it all, Jess was my rock. She stayed with me, made sure I ate and kept me company when I felt like I couldn't face the world. Slowly, I began to find my footing again. I threw myself into work, started going to the gym and spent more time with friends and family. The pain was still there, but it was starting to dull. And then, just as I was beginning to feel like myself again, something unexpected happened that would change everything once more. The days turned into weeks, and while the initial shock of Mark's betrayal had begun to wear off, the scars remained. I was determined not to let this break me. With Jess by my side, I threw myself into rebuilding my life. Every morning I forced myself out of bed, lacing up my running shoes and hitting the pavement. The physical exertion was therapeutic, a way to channel my anger and sadness into something positive. Work became my sanctuary. I took on new projects, poured my energy into every task, and soon found myself earning the respect and admiration of my colleagues. They knew something had happened, but they respected my privacy and allowed me the space to heal. 
It was in the midst of this intense focus that I began to notice Daniel. Daniel was a colleague who had recently transferred from another branch. He was quiet, with an easy smile and a knack for solving problems. We had exchanged pleasantries before, but I hadn't paid him much attention. That changed one Friday evening when our team decided to go out for drinks. I was hesitant at first, but Jess insisted, saying it would do me good to socialise. At the bar, Daniel found his way to my side. We chatted about work, shared stories, and before I knew it, I was laughing, genuinely laughing, for the first time in weeks. He was attentive, his eyes never leaving mine as we talked. It was refreshing to be seen, to be heard, without the weight of my recent past hanging over me. As the weeks went by, Daniel and I grew closer. We started having lunch together, then dinner. He never pried into my personal life, but his quiet presence was comforting. One evening, as we walked through a park after dinner, he finally asked about my hesitation. You seem guarded, he said gently. I don't mean to pry, but if you ever want to talk, I'm here. I felt a lump in my throat. For a moment I considered brushing it off, but something in his eyes made me want to open up. I told him about Mark, about the wedding that never happened, and the betrayal that shattered my heart. He listened without interrupting, his expression soft and understanding. I'm sorry you went through that, he said when I finished. You deserve so much better. His words touched something deep within me. For the first time since everything fell apart, I felt a glimmer of hope. Our relationship deepened after that night. We spent more time together, sharing our hopes, dreams and fears. Daniel was patient, never pushing me beyond what I was comfortable with, but always there, a steady presence in my life. One Saturday morning, Daniel suggested we take a day trip to the coast. It was a beautiful escape from the city, with the salty air and crashing waves providing a backdrop to our budding romance. As we walked along the beach, hand in hand, I felt a sense of peace I hadn't known in a long time. Daniel stopped suddenly, pulling me into a gentle embrace. I know you've been hurt, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, but I want you to know that I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Tears filled my eyes as I leaned into him, the warmth of his arms a stark contrast to the coldness I had felt for so long. For the first time, I allowed myself to hope for a future, one where I could be happy and loved without fear. But life, as it often does, had one more twist in store for me. Just as I was beginning to feel secure in my new relationship, Mark reappeared. It started with a message, a long, heartfelt apology, followed by flowers at my door and constant attempts to reach out. He was desperate to win me back, insisting he had changed and that he would do anything to make things right. At first I ignored him, but his persistence was hard to shake. He showed up at my office one afternoon, begging for a chance to talk. My colleagues watched in awkward silence as I led him to a private conference room. His eyes were red, his face drawn. He looked like a man who had lost everything. Please, just hear me out, he pleaded. I know I hurt you, but I can't live without you. I've made a terrible mistake, and I need you to give me another chance. I listened in silence, my emotions a tumultuous mix of anger, sadness and confusion. Part of me wanted to scream at him, to tell him he had no right to disrupt my life again. But another part of me, the part that had loved him deeply, felt a pang of sympathy. He seemed genuinely remorseful, but I couldn't forget the pain he had caused. As he continued to plead his case, I realised I was at a crossroads. I could give in to the familiarity of my past with Mark, or I could embrace the uncertain but hopeful future with Daniel. The decision weighed heavily on me, and I knew I had to choose wisely for my own sake. Mark's pleas echoed in my mind long after he left the office that day. I felt like I was being pulled in two directions, each with its own set of uncertainties and potential heartbreaks. I needed clarity, so I turned to the one person who had been my unwavering support through all of this, Jess. We met at our favourite café, the comforting aroma of coffee enveloping us as we settled into a corner booth. Jess looked at me with concern as I recounted Mark's visit and his desperate attempts to win me back. What do you want to do? She asked gently, her eyes searching mine for answers. I don't know, I admitted, feeling the weight of my indecision. 
A part of me wants to believe he's changed, that he genuinely regrets what he did. But I've started something new with Daniel, and I don't want to ruin that. Jess nodded, her expression thoughtful. You've been through so much, and you deserve to be happy. Don't let guilt or fear cloud your judgment. Think about what's best for you, not just in the moment, but in the long run. Her words resonated with me, but they didn't make the decision any easier. Over the next few days, I found myself increasingly distracted at work, my mind constantly drifting back to the two men in my life. Daniel noticed my unease and finally confronted me about it one evening as we sat in his cosy apartment, the glow of the city lights outside casting a warm light around us. Something's been bothering you, he said softly, taking my hand in his. You can talk to me about it. I took a deep breath and told him about Mark's attempts to reconcile. Daniel listened quietly, his expression inscrutable. When I finished, he was silent for a moment. Then he spoke with a calm that both reassured and unsettled me. I understand why you're conflicted, he said. You have history with him and it's natural to feel torn. But you need to ask yourself if you can truly trust him again. And more importantly, what do you feel when you're with me? His question hung in the air, demanding an answer. I thought about how I felt when I was with Daniel, safe, valued and genuinely happy. But the shadow of my past with Mark loomed large, and I knew I had to face it head on before I could move forward. The next day, I agreed to meet Mark for coffee. We sat in a small, quiet cafe, the tension between us palpable. Mark looked different, more subdued, as if the weight of his actions had finally caught up with him. I miss you he began, his voice cracking. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I'm asking for it anyway. I've been seeing a therapist trying to understand why I did what I did, and I realise now how much I took you for granted. His confession was heartfelt, but I couldn't ignore the pain he had caused. Mark, I appreciate that you're trying to change, but I can't just forget what happened. You shattered my trust, and I don't know if I can ever get that back. Tears welled in his eyes, but he nodded, accepting my words. I understand. I just... I needed to try. You deserve the world, and I'm sorry I couldn't give that to you. Leaving that cafe, I felt a strange sense of closure. Mark's apology didn't erase the hurt, but it allowed me to let go of some of the anger I'd been holding on to. I realised then that my future didn't lie with him. It was with Daniel, the man who had stood by me through the storm without ever asking for anything in return. I called Daniel that evening and asked him to meet me at the park where we had first opened up to each other. As we walked along the familiar path, I took his hand and told him everything. My meeting with Mark, my decision and my hopes for our future together. I choose you, Daniel, I said, my voice trembling with emotion. You've shown me what it means to be loved and respected and I want to build something real with you. Daniel's eyes softened and he pulled me into a tight embrace. I've been waiting to hear those words, he whispered. I promise I'll never take you for granted. Our relationship deepened in the weeks that followed. We spent weekends exploring new places, trying new things, and just enjoying each other's company. Daniel's patience and kindness were like a balm to my wounded heart, helping me to heal in ways I hadn't thought possible. However, the past has a way of lingering, and just when I thought I was free of Mark's influence, he made one last desperate attempt to win me back. It was a rainy Sunday afternoon when he showed up at my door, drenched and desperate. His eyes were wild, his voice frantic. Please give me another chance, he begged. I've changed, I swear. I'll do anything to prove it to you. I stood there, torn between the man I had once loved and the future I was building with Daniel. This time, I knew I had to make a definitive choice, not just for my sake, but for everyone involved. Mark stood on my doorstep, rain pouring down around him, his eyes filled with a desperate hope that tugged at my heartstrings. I took a deep breath, steadying myself. This was it, the moment where I had to firmly close one chapter of my life to fully embrace another. Mark, I began, my voice steady but gentle. I understand you're sorry and that you're trying to change. But this isn't just about forgiveness, it's about trust, and you broke that in a way that can't be easily repaired. His shoulders slumped, the rain plastering his hair to his forehead. I know, he whispered, I just, I can't accept losing you. 
I stepped forward, placing a hand on his arm. You have to, I said softly. I've moved on, and I think you need to do the same. We both deserve a fresh start, even if it's not together. Mark nodded, tears mixing with the rain on his face. I wish you all the happiness in the world, he said, his voice cracking with emotion. I'm sorry for everything. I wish you the best too, Mark, I replied. Goodbye. I watched as he turned and walked away, disappearing into the rain-soaked streets. A part of me felt a profound sense of relief. I had finally closed the door on that painful chapter of my life, and it was time to fully embrace the new one. Later that evening, I called Daniel and asked him to come over. When he arrived, I could see the concern in his eyes, but I quickly reassured him with a smile. We sat together on the couch, and I told him about my final conversation with Mark. It's over, I said. I chose you, Daniel. I want to build a future with you. His eyes softened, and he took my hands in his. I promise you I'll always be here for you, he said. We'll make this work together. With Mark out of my life, I felt an incredible sense of freedom. Daniel and I continued to grow closer, our bond deepening with each passing day. We shared our dreams, planned trips, and spent countless hours just enjoying each other's company. It was a relationship built on trust, respect, and a deep, abiding love. A few months later, Daniel surprised me with a weekend getaway to a beautiful lakeside cabin. It was a serene escape from the hustle and bustle of the city, a perfect setting for the next chapter of our lives. As we sat by the lake one evening, watching the sunset, Daniel turned to me with a serious expression. I have something for you, he said, reaching into his pocket. My heart skipped a beat as he pulled out a small velvet box. He opened it to reveal a delicate sparkling ring. I know we've both been through a lot, he began, but I can't imagine my life without you. Will you marry me? Tears of joy filled my eyes as I nodded, unable to speak. He slipped the ring onto my finger and we sealed our commitment with a kiss under the fading light of the day. Our wedding was a small, intimate affair, attended by close friends and family. Jess, of course, was my maid of honour, beaming with pride as she stood by my side. As I walked down the aisle towards Daniel, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace and happiness. This was where I was meant to be, with the man who had shown me what true love and partnership looked like. In the months that followed, Daniel and I built a life together filled with love, laughter and mutual respect. We faced challenges, of course, but we tackled them together, always supporting and uplifting each other. Reflecting on my journey, I realised how far I had come since that fateful day when I discovered Mark's betrayal. What had initially seemed like the end of my world had become the catalyst for an incredible transformation. I had found strength I didn't know I had, and discovered a love that was true and enduring. To anyone reading this, thank you for sharing this journey with me. Life has a way of surprising us, often when we least expect it. Trust in yourself, embrace the people who lift you up, and never be afraid to close one door so that another, even better one can open. I'd love to hear your thoughts or any similar experiences you've had. Let's keep this conversation going and support each other through life's ups and downs.